I'm inserting this little bit of video to explain what the next section is. The courtyard presented some challenges for me. I really had never even thought of having a house with a courtyard. I, I, I'll say right off, it's not really my preference. I like houses where there's a beautiful grand porch and the door faces the street and you can look out at the street from the front door and you can look at the door from the street. Anyway, I couldn't wrap my head around what would make that um, courtyard look more charming, I guess. I initially was thinking of window boxes. That wasn't gonna work out. The windows are two different sizes and neither one of them is standard. And there were gonna be issues with watering. And I ultimately, after looking at a lot of pictures on Pinterest, decided that I would anchor that little section and, and take care of that big expanse of wall with a trellis a kind of a big trellis I wanted, and then a largish rectangular tall planter. Unfortunately, that's an expensive proposition. Trellises, especially the size I wanted, are incredibly expensive. Um, the planters are too, but I really uh, stumbled on a great deal because I'm still a budget gardener. So I was at a, uh, an estate sale in Portland. I had gone to replace my wheelbarrow because I had to leave it behind in California. That's another good deal I'll tell you about another time. But anyway, I found this trellis and it was the last day of the sale. Most estate sales mark everything half off the last day. So I, they had it cheap to begin with. It was $25. I got it for $12.50. It's a little smaller than what I had in mind, but that's okay because I can afford $12.50. The planter on the other hand, not so cheap. Um, I bought the trellis first, which is good because the planter needed to be the right width for the trellis. I never intended to put the trellis into the planter. I want to make it look as big as possible, so I was going to hang it on the wall as high as I could. Um, it was a little damaged from the pe previous owners. Um, somehow the, the legs that you stick it into the ground with are splayed, or one of them is splayed, kind of bent, and we bent it back as much as we could. but. I'm going to have other plants there on the porch, so I, I don't mind. We're just kind of camouflaging it with what we put in front of it. The planter, I looked and looked and looked to find one that wasn't ridiculous. I finally found one on Amazon, still way more than I would have liked to have paid. But I think uh, initially um, it was around 150 maybe 160 I'm choking as I think of this, but I found one that was in there new but used, if you've ever used that feature. We've used that a lot for things we've bought for the new house. Basically, it's somebody's return probably, and the box is either damaged or the box is, um, it's not the original box, or it's not packaged the way it came from the manufacturer, and so they sell it at a discount. So I wanna say we got the planter for just over 100. I know, still a lot of money but it is the perfect thing. And so this is what you're gonna see next. Me planting out the planter. I realize now I'm gonna to have to plant it out probably seasonally because the sun moves quite a lot during the seasons and it's such a narrow courtyard that it's a slice of sun that's changing all the time. So the first planting was a bust, uh, but I've already planted it out for summer and then um, I'll figure it out as we go from here because again, I'm new to this whole area, I'm new to this house, I'm new to everything. Um, one last thought, if you noticed my seams are showing, I've got my shirt on inside out because I'm actually today doing a painting project back there. That is a console table I bought for the courtyard as well. I don't know if it's in any of the footage that follows because I can't remember. But in any case, I got it on offer up for very little, I don't remember, maybe $20. And it's metal, which I love because it can be outside all season table. And it's gonna also help anchor and define the courtyard. It is um, intended for underneath the kitchen window, which is just, actually that's what you see as you walk up the courtyard. And it's just adjacent to the front door. And so I've got a little tiny bubbler fountain that will go on top of that. And then the courtyard is off to this. I mean, the planter is off to the side. I can't see this table from the kitchen window when I'm doing dishes, but boy, I can see that planter and I love that view now. Um, and then with the window open, I'll probably be able to hear the fountain. I'm super excited about how the courtyard is moving forward. I also have a bistro table 
that will be just across from the planter. And so it's like a triangle, this table on one end, and then the planter on one side and the bistro table on the other. Anyway, here we go. Okay, so I planted a few things in here. A Cucura coral bells, I believe that one has pink blooms on it. And then a couple of little bare root hostas. And then the only other thing I've done is sprinkled some columbine seeds, but they are gonna take a year to establish. So we'll see if they make it. And then these large pots have tulips, as do the smaller pots. Um, the large pots were planted out a lot sooner than the little ones. I don't even see the tiniest glimmer of anything coming in the little pots. And then today I was very excited to find a forsythia that's a dwarf because I don't want to deal with a big one. So I have in mind where I think I want to put it. I also found a pink hydrangea on clearance. It's looking kind of raggedy, but it'll bounce back. And then I have some other small items that I've picked up. This is the one plant that came from California. Still haven't decided where it's going to go, but I love the color of that bloom. And it's doing well. And then this is my um, hellebore that is starting to look a little droopy. I... So it's slow progress because all my attention has been on the inside of the house. And that's actually coupled with the fact that I don't really know exactly what I want to do everywhere out here. I freshened up these little birds or pots, planters that flank the garage door. The, um, there's a salvia back here that came back, it's perennial, and then this one is a, I cannot remember, it'll come to me later. And then the creeping jenny that had been in this pot died, so I put a new one in and I'm actually trying to propagate it a little bit. So this one, the salvia is doing great. The um, creeping jenny in this one was doing okay when I was doing something. I don't know what, I kind of broke a little bit of it off, but I think it'll, it'll come back okay. This area here seems like a lot of opportunity and prime real estate for planting. It does get afternoon sun. It's probably one of the few really sunny spots. I think what I'm going to do is put the forsythia somewhere in this vicinity of what is my new pine curve. And then these euonymus, golden euonymus, I think that's what they are, are going to probably also move to that area somehow back there. And I'm planning to put my peonies here. They require a little sun. So I feel like this is a good spot and then just do some kind of a floral planter here. I love that uh, I have these beautiful trees, which I, they look like they're a plum tree when they're not in blossom. So I think they may be an ornamental plum, but I don't know. But I think I might put the hydrangea in front of those. Because it's pink, I think it'll, I'm not trying to go matchy-matchy, but I think it'll look good there. I don't know if it gets too much sun. It's not a large yard, but there is opportunity here. And then I have this entire shade garden here. Again, it's under an evergreen, so it's going to present some of the issues I had in the previous home because it drops, it doesn't drop pine cones as much, but it drops these whatever they are, warligig kind of things that are, that are coming down in the winter and a lot of little needles. So I cleaned up these ferns and this is new. I did not notice this the last time I was out. Friend or foe, I don't know. The ivy also had gotten really out of hand. I so probably should still trim it a little bit more, but I took it down on the fence quite a lot. I don't really want to cut on my azaleas until after they bloom. So I have one here, and then I have tulips in pots. Those two are the only two that came up, sadly. And there look, it looks like there's holes here. I think maybe I had some squirrel um, buffet going on. 
I know I had some kind of a critter get into this one. I don't know if they took a bulb, but I have four still, so that's good. This is a Nazelia as well, and I want to cut it back, but not till after it blooms. These arborvitas are growing into the fence, the gate, so I want to trim this back. I actually would love to remove one of these, maybe the middle one. I don't know. They're just, I don't care for them too much. They're just so big and bulby. I'm, I'm not going to jump into anything. I'll try to work around them. They're pretty. Like, I don't have a problem with the way they look. I think they look beautiful. But the yard is so small that I hate that they take up so much room in that border. Um, this one has a, a little extra added feature that I like, and that is that it kind of gives us a little bit of privacy right here. And then when this, the tree behind it is a maple, and when it leafs out, it kind of adds a little bit of a, you know, filtered blocking of the courtyard. Like, just enough. I don't know how often I'll use this courtyard, but I feel like I'm going to use it. Uh, it's a mess right now, because I'm working. But I have this little Ikea bistro set that's buried under all my stuff. And I like the idea of having it a little further down in this area. And maybe what I'll just do is put a pot with something tall growing here. But a way to just come out and sit and have coffee. I do have the backyard, but this is so much more convenient to my front door. I would like the freedom to sit here, enjoy my coffee, and look at this. Because I, I really like this little focal area that I'm working on. I don't necessarily like all these round pots here. The, the large ones feel a bit like overkill. They're a bit, a bit too large here. Um, and the only reason I used them was because I really didn't want to put anything in the ground because my ground is really a mystery to me here. And it was felt re really hard. And I thought, you know, rather than try to dig holes for, for tulips, I would just put them in pots. And I had a lot of tulip bulbs. So these were the largest pots I could quickly put my hands on. I think when everything's in bloom, it'll look really pretty though. So I have plans to paint that table under the window black. It looks like a store, doesn't it? Of bulbs and corms and bare root plants. This is just stuff I need to deal with. I was marking down what the height of everything is and trying to decide what's gonna go where. But I have a little bubbling fountain that will be plugged in here. And again, this will be painted black and I just want it to be a peaceful little area to, as I mentioned, enjoy my coffee. Well, I got one shrub moved. I want to move both, or the second one, back to where I've moved the first one, back here by these cedar trees. I actually did start getting the area ready. I, I dug a hole, <laughs> might need to be a little bigger than that. But I got rained out. I could do it today, actually. The rain's light enough today. But the last time I was out here, it started coming down in very, very heavy uh, sheets. And I was not properly attired. I had, I had some weatherproofing on, but I didn't have something to keep the water out of my eyes. So this is, <laughs> this is a work in progress. Well, I've moved both the Euonymus. And they're in their new home. And I actually was able to get the forsythia planted as well. We'll see if this ends up being the perfect spot, but I do like how it's looking. It's got a more yellowy, greeny vibe. The berm where they came from is gonna be a pinky whitey vibe. And I'm not sure what my plan is here. There are currently some yellow toned ornamental grasses and I've interplanted allium bulbs. And the thought is that when the grasses are mature, the foliage will be dying off, I think, for the alliums and the grasses can camouflage. This weeping tree is gone. It changes the view to the house. I really love this. Now I feel like I can see all the possibilities. There's our mulch. We raised the canopy there so that the garden can have some sun. All good. <laughs>